Your talk here is titled Occupied Politics, Israel's War Against Palestine and Its Supporters. I want you to say a word about the Israel lobby. I mean, who it is, what it is, how it operates, who funds it, uh, and uh, specifically its influence on politicians. I mean, uh, you know, on Congress, on the executive branch, et cetera. And as part of that, maybe say a word about how it, how it uh, uh, makes its way down, not only on the national level, but on college campuses, for example, with Canary Mission, and then the other groups that you see its impact on. Yeah, I mean, what is the Israel lobby? The Israel lobby is a very atomized uh, structure of organizations that all act for a single goal, which is to protect America's special relation ship with Israel no matter what Israel does and to ensure permanent American support for the state of Israel in the form of billions of dollars of loans but also uh, cultural support for Israel and that means that the Israel lobby not only functions within Washington as this juggernaut which as Ilhan Omar correctly said essentially pays politicians to support Israel and punishes politicians who don't sufficiently support Israel by running challenge candidates against them. Uh, but it also functions in Fort Wayne, uh, in any community in the U.S. through uh, organizations like the Jewish Federations to try to shut down uh, talks at churches where a, Palest uh, a speaker will come to present another view of Palestine. They will try to prevent uh, books from appearing, like my book Goliath, uh, that were harshly critical of Israel. And they will even attack art exhibitions. For example, an exhibition of children's art from the Gaza Strip yeah. was canceled under pressure from the San Francisco Jewish Federations um, from showing. So they aim to impose total spec full spectrum dominance on every sphere of life in the country to prevent anything from slipping through the cracks that could show Americans another perspective on Israel-Palestine. And that's very dangerous because it's anti-democratic and it's resulted in them as they lose control over the debate, turning to state power uh, in the form of anti-BDS bills that punish Americans or American companies that refuse to do business with Israel with fines and even uh, threats of, imp of, I don't think they're going to jail terms yet, but, but fines and lawsuits are definitely in the offing. And then you have Canary Mission, as you mentioned, which is a website designed explicitly by the people behind it who have concealed their identities to deny employment to college students uh, because they are active in Palestine Solidarity on campus. And so it consists of dossiers of students who are said to be terrorists or anti-Semites or extremists because of what they did on campus in support of Palestinian equality. It's essentially a McCarthyite blacklisting site. And the point is anonymity. No one knows who's behind it, except we do know who's behind it. We know what operation is behind it. It's part of the Israel lobby, and it is working hand in glove with the Ministry of Strategic Affairs in Israel, which is a special ministry created to combat the global boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement, and is run by Gilad Erdan, who is a, a pretty unspectacular Israeli minister, not, not exactly you know, the sharpest guy, but behind him <clears throat> is a former Israeli Shin Bet agent uh, named um, Simon Vaknin Gill, who is really the brains behind the operation. And she coordinates between these Israel lobby groups and the Israeli intelligence services. So when you look at the Israel lobby, you know, your neighbors who work with the Jewish Federation, who, you know, you, you, could, you might be friendly with, they don't maybe coordinate with the Israeli government. But some of their research and what they're doing, you know, when they do research on various figures in Fort Wayne, who's coming to speak here, who's doing the activism, could still make its way into Israel's yeah. database. Uh, <laughs> same with Canary Mission. 
You know, they're relying on pro-Israel student groups on campus, which often are Jewish groups, which is really unfortunate um, because a lot of these students don't realize that, don't think of themselves as working on behalf of Israel. But their research on students goes into Israel's intelligence database, and many people who wound up on Canary Missions uh, blacklist have been denied entry by Israel on the basis of the fact that they were on Canary Missions blacklist. So yeah. the Israel lobby is essentially acting on behalf of a foreign apartheid state, and yet none of these organizations, including APAC, the big juggernaut, are registered as foreign agents. And this is bipartisan. I mean, uh, Republican, Democrat, Independent, right? I mean, this is, uh, uh, the Israel lobby has its tentacles into both parties at its very root. Absolutely. Uh, I think there is a clash coming in the Democratic Party, yeah. but the Israel lobby was central in uh, the career of Cory Booker, in creating Cory Booker as a national politician. Um, his biggest donor was NORPAC, which is actually more extreme than APAC, uh, openly Islamophobic, and had fa taken positions that APAC hadn't taken because APAC's duty in its, its, its oath is to abide by the policy of whoever Israelis elect as prime minister. So NORPAC took its own position, which was to the right of APAC, and that's who supported Cory Booker for much of his career, until recently. He's, no, he's now saying, I'm not taking PAC money, because he doesn't need it anymore. But yeah, so the Democratic Party has, uh, is, is, uh, has the toxins of the Israel lobby in its veins as well.